Hey, we're here at Matter Hackers, and it is uh, the week before Comic Con, and so we have some really exciting guests like Bill Duran from Punish Props. Hello, everybody. You know him from his YouTube channel, which just crossed 100,000 yes, subscribers. Did. So sure I know did. you know Bill because you're totally a subscriber, and if you're not, if you're not, you should subscribe. Um, Bill, tell us uh, what brings you to Southern California. Uh, Comic Con, of course. San Diego Comic Con is this weekend. We'll be there, me and my wife. We made some new costumes for Comic Con. Tell us about this guy. This is the mechanist from Fallout Four, not Fallout Three. Different version. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are a lot of Fallout fans out there that will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this here is just a helmet. Obviously, there's a whole other set of armor that's in the car right now. But I brought this guy in to show off because I used several 3D printing techniques mm -hmm. uh, on some of the different pieces on here. Go ahead and tell us. I mean, this right. is what sets your um, channel apart from a lot of other right. 3D printing channels is that you're really a prop building channel right. and you've been using 3D printing. Yes, Just we tell have. Tell us more about that. Sure. So on this guy, the base of it is all foam. It's an EVA foam uh, with very traditional foam fabrication techniques. You know, just cutting layers of foam, gluing it together with contact cement, um, sealing it in latex rubber. It's very durable. Mm -hmm. It's flexible. It doesn't breathe so much. Oh, that's a problem if you're but, wearing it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was able to fabricate this very quickly. Some of the other parts, though, like the antenna and the antenna, which unscrews for travel, which is incredibly handy so that they don't snap off. Mm -hmm. uh, this was printed on the Ultimaker. 3D printer that we have cool. in an ABS, and that worked out really well. I just painted it to look like it's from the game. So that's the obvious 3D printing piece on there. But there are some other elements that aren't 3D printed, but I use 3D printing to solve those problems. Hmm. Namely, these eye portions here, these goggles. So these, uh, these have a slight taper to them, and it's kind of specific, and it was kind of tricky to figure out the pattern for it. So I 3D printed them. Did it all up in CAD, 3D printed them, and then I wrapped tape around those prints, cut that tape out, and I had a perfect foam template. Ah. So these parts right here are still that flexible foam, nice and lightweight. Um, I thought about just gluing the 3D printed piece down, uh, but sealing it with latex probably could have been a problem. So I know foam, I just did it all in foam, and that worked out. The goggles, because I had the files for the, uh, the goggles part, the lenses, I should say, I 3D printed the lenses. Now they were solid, couldn't see through them, so I used a, a small vacuum form machine to vacuum form these lenses. Very cool. And then because they were built off the same file, I knew they would be exactly the right size. Yeah. So there you go. That is all of the 3D printing and 3D printing problem solving you use to build this helmet. That's great. So now tell me a little bit about the background of uh, you starting Punish Props and then how 3D printing actually came into the picture. Sure. Um, we started Punish Props uh, four, four or five years ago. I did. My wife is on the team uh, now full time, which is awesome. I did it really doing prop and costume making, very traditional type stuff. A lot of um, model making, a lot of power tools and uh, molding and casting. And even though I have a background in 3D modeling, um, I just never got the push to go into 3D printing uh, because I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just make it on a lathe or I'll just make it on all the, the other power mm -hmm. tools I have. And then we had a chance to work with Autodesk uh, a year ago and do a 3D printing video series on our YouTube channel. So in, as part of that, they um, sent us the Dremel 3D printer which worked out really great. It's a great little workhorse, and mm -hmm. we're like, oh, we'll give, it a, we'll give it a shot. And it worked right out of the box, and uh, this changes everything. Like, it was a huge revelation for us, because I've already got this background in 3D modeling, so I was ready to make custom parts right out the door, and it, it literally changed how we do just about everything, um, whether it's building templates or custom fabricating parts. Uh, and now it's a huge part of just about every project we do. Again, it may not be fully 3D printed, but they usually have some elements in there. Yeah. And was that your first experience with 3D printing? It really was. And again, I don't know what took us so long to get into it. This seems like something I should have started like five years ago. Uh, but I feel like I'm, I'm 
come uh, catching up with for yeah. lost time. <laughs> right. The amount of printing we've been doing lately. We have three printers now, and uh, we're hanging out with Joel a whole bunch. He lives just just north of us. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're catching up. <laughs> yeah. So looking forward, so it's amazing what you're able to do with 3D printing in your property making now. This is just one example, yeah. and then you are also going to be doing a season two of your yes. 3D printing series, right? Yeah. I, I like to, whenever I'm picking a new project, um, I like to focus on a skill or a technique that I can learn or improve in that project. So for the next season, we're going to do a, we call it Prop 3D. Uh, I want to build something large, mm -hmm. probably something from the video game Destiny, because it's one of my favorite video mm -hmm. games, uh, like a big rifle or something. And the challenge there, of course, is building something uh, that won't all fit in the printer. So I've got to figure out how to build it in different pieces, fit all those pieces together, finish all those parts so they look like a nice, smooth, you know, alien space rifle or something. Yeah. Um, that's something I haven't quite done yet. Um, I figure I can learn a lot from that. I figure our viewers can learn a lot from that. It'll be a longer uh, season where every episode we do a different part of this big project so people can follow along with the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we have lots of other just 3D printing things that we want to play with. Um, so we'll do interstitial videos on different techniques, different types of printers, whatever we can get our hands on, yeah. uh, we'll throw it in there. So we're really excited to get that on. under uh, underway in like a week or two. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's going to be a lot of filament you're going to need. It for sure that. is. Project, Bill. Wherever yeah. are you going to get that filament from? I saw a lot of it back there. <laughs> Awful lot of filament in the in the back of this here building. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of wonderful colors. And I know. I'm sure stuff. you have a lot of filament. Yes, you yeah. do. Meta Hackers is very, very excited <laughs> to be a part of your next Yeah, you guys season. are going to help out with some filament. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, Sure, if I run into any 3D printing problems, I can give you guys a ring. Turns out we do have a couple of people who know a few things about 3D printing. If Joel yes. doesn't know the answer, yep. we might know the answer. Yeah. So moving forward, thinking about um, 3D printing in the future, what inspires you? What inspires you about 3D printing in general, and where do you see it going, especially for your purposes? Right. Um, well, our focus with our YouTube channel is to is to instruct people. You know, uh, people want to build props and costumes. They want to go to Comic Con with the next cool big thing, and um, I want to teach people how to take an idea from their head or something from their favorite TV show and make it completely from scratch. So that means learning some three D modeling skills and then figuring out the best way to print that and then mm -hmm. figuring out the best way to finish it so that their costume looks perfect, like a totally uncompromising finished piece on their on their costume because that's what cosplayers do they reach that crazy level of fanaticism yeah. and obsession it's a perfectionist yeah way. to do all the details on the costume yeah. that no one's going to see yeah. except for them but that's you know i want to facilitate that by, yeah. by teaching people how to how to you know jump feet first into this brave new world of 3d printing the same just the same way that we did you know just a year ago been so exciting for me. I want to empower other people to be able to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so switching gears just a little okay. bit. Um, what? How long have you? How long has your YouTube channel been up and running? Started it three, three and a half years ago, I think. Um, we have over four hundred videos now, so we've been busy. Wow. <laughs> And I know that it wasn't, it didn't start with 3D printing, but right. what was the spark that said, oh, we should get a camera and hit record for what we're doing right now? I've always enjoyed um, video production. I was very fortunate in high school, we had a whole video production room. Um, so I learned nonlinear editing and linear editing um, when I was like 15. So I got into video editing really early. Um, although, funny enough, I was never the on screen talent, I was always a tech in the back doing animation ah. or, or stuff. Um, but I like being on camera, uh, I'm not going to lie, a little bit vain, but I enjoy it. It's really fun. And for me, whenever I'm learning something, if I can't get a hands-on instruction from someone else, I go to YouTube. I go look up videos on how other people do what they do. So when people started asking me how I built my props, I thought, well, that's, that's the best way that I can showcase these techniques to as many people as possible. So I started shooting YouTube videos. Yeah. And I just plain haven't stopped. <laughs> and it would be crazy to stop now. <laughs> well, 100,000 people at least seem to think you're doing a pretty good job at it. Yes, I, I agree. And thank you, obviously, anyone, any of our subscribers watching. 
because uh, we just hit that, uh, that milestone, and now I have to decide if my play button should be foam or 3D printed. I think it's oh, going to be foam. These are the problems you want. Yeah, to yeah. Joel can have the 3D printed one. I think that's fair. I'm going to make mine out of foam. <laughs> now, for people out there that are watching and are looking at your videos and looking at other 3D printing channels and saying, I can totally do that. Mm -hmm. I've got a 3D printer. I've got a camera. Easy. Yeah. What advice would you give to these people who want to be the next YouTube star? Uh, produce whatever you're going to do. Make content regularly. Commit to shooting one video a week. We did for two or three years. I, I would shoot videos whenever I could, and that I was fairly regular with it. But I can say that um, in the the past fall, um, ha having my wife on the team, uh, so literally doubling our workforce, that gave us more time to commit to producing higher quality videos every single week. Um, and now we do three a week. Um, but when we made the shift to really committing to no matter what, getting a new video up every week, everything went bonkers. Mm. It, like, since then, our subscribers have more than doubled. So give people a reason to keep tuning in. I didn't do that right away because I had a hard time justifying it because I'm trying to run a small business and I could only really shoot the video in the free time and the videos didn't make me any money. But if I had known that it was going to become what it is now, then I would have said, no, I have to have a video every single week. This is going to set me ahead years if I do it now. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I would have done differently with, with the YouTube, just every single week. Yeah, it's good advice. Yeah. So you've got the Prop Studio, you've yep. got your YouTube channel, yep. you also write books. I do write books. I didn't so think I was going to be an author. <laughs> I, uh, when I got started... My business was just, I would, someone would commission me to build a prop. I'd build a prop, and then they would pay me for it. And that worked for a little while before I realized it was almost completely unsustainable. Mm -hmm. And I started investigating other ways, not only just other ways to, to make money for my business, but other ways I could reach a wider audience. And at the time, no one was writing instruction manuals on the sort of cosplay-specific techniques. So for us, like the foam fabrication thing is a staple of just about everything we make. Mm -hmm. So um, I just started started knocking out ebooks, just self published, just write an ebook, put it for sale on my website. And at the time, I was the only person doing it, and in our community anyway. So people were like, hey, that's kind of cool. And it was just a beginner's guide with a whole bunch of basic stuff. And then I don't know, maybe you know, six months or a year later. People were asking me when I was going to write another book. I was like, "Oh, I didn't. I didn't like, I'm not really. I'm not really an author, but I can write another book." So I started writing books on foam fabrication, and that turned into this ridiculous phenomenon. So I wrote three of those in a sort of like a trilogy on start to finish how to do your whole um, foam costume. And um, then last year, the first thing when, when Brittany quit her job, the first thing she did was she took that and turned it into a print book. Um, so we have Foamsmith 1, how mm -hmm. to make foam uh, armor, and then we just finished Foamsmith 2 on foam props. And now that's, uh, my business card says author on it. And I'm like, when did this happen? I have no idea, but it's really cool. We see people all around the world making stuff using the techniques that we teach in our books and in our videos, and it's, it's the coolest thing that we do. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much for coming down. We're excited about uh, the meetup tonight, yeah. and uh, we're excited to be down at Nerd HQ. Uh, Matter, Hackers, Matter Hackers will be yeah. running some 3D printers down at Nerd HQ, so we'll awesome. see you down there in your full suit. We'll have this on, yeah. yeah. I'll be sweating like a crazy person, but Excellent. it's Comic Con, it's worth it. That's right. Stay hydrated, everybody. Yes. Wear lots of deodorant. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me.